Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's just jump right into this video. The first thing I'm gonna make is some jack-o'-lantern burgers. These are completely easy. You can customize the burgers however you do them, on the grill, on the stove, whatever your choice and you can use the singles or the sharp cheddar, but I will tell you I do prefer the singles just because they hold the shape better, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. But first thing you need to do is carve your faces. You can carve whatever kind of face you want. Just use a really sharp paring knife and take your time so you don't rip through the cheese. These right here are what it looks like when you use the cheddar and what they melt like, and I don't think the shape would stay as well. This is after they've already been cooked on the grill and the cheese melted with the singles. This is why I say go this route. Put them on a bun, top them however you like, and you're good. Number two is some Halloween pull-apart cupcakes. You could decorate these like a jack-o'-lantern. You could do anything you want to, Frankenstein, Jack Skellington, you name it but it's just these two jars of icing so I didn't have to color anything, a box of whatever cake mix you like, I chose Halloween Funfetti, and some black decorating icing, not the gel, you want the actual icing. Bake it according to the package, and I did it for the cupcakes and the time that it said on the box. Arrange your cupcakes once they're completely cooled into whatever shape you're gonna make your pumpkin, but make sure you save one for the stem at the top. I put the icing in a bag just to make it easier to get it all the way around these cupcakes and then when you're smoothing the icing, make sure you smooth it with some lines like a pumpkin would have, some to the left, some to the right, just to add and give that pumpkin shape to it. And then I put that black icing in a bag, I used a Q-tip and I drew my face on that I was going to use and this is how they turned out. They're so easy, the kids went nuts. The next one is some Halloween grilled cheese and tomato soup. I make the easiest tomato soup recipe. It's just a pint of whatever spaghetti sauce you use. I like this one just because there's no chunks to it. Half a cup of chicken broth and a third of a cup of heavy cream. I double mine, that's why it looks like a lot here. But we double ours in our house, so you don't have to. But simmer it in a pot, just combine it all. Simmer it on low to medium. Stir it occasionally because there is cream in there. You don't want it to get to the bottom and scorch. But that's all you do is heat it up and eat it. It is so fantastic to dip grilled cheese in. And then of course our assembly line of grilled cheese, however you do it, whatever bread you want, butter on the outside, mayo on the outside, whatever you use, just make grilled cheese the way that you normally would. If you have a ghost cookie cutter, use that. I don't, so I'm just using some scissors that I keep in my kitchen. And I'm gonna cut this thing into the shape of a ghost the best that I can, and then I'm gonna use some olives, some sliced black olives, and put it on there for the eyes. And then I'm gonna add my bowl of soup, and to make this more Halloween, I'm gonna take some small mozzarella pearls or small mozzarella balls, whichever one you can find, and you're going to take a black olive and you're going to cut it into a small little black circle to just push onto that ball and then slowly put them in your soup gently and there you go. It's so cute, my kids got a kick out of this one too. And don't worry about the grilled cheese scraps, I gave them to them too to dip in their soup. This next one I'm calling zombie lasagna, it could be monster lasagna, whatever you wanna call that creature, a mummy, I don't know. But just make lasagna the way you would normally make it. These are some of my normal ingredients, but for the top, I had some shredded mozzarella cheese, a zucchini, and some more black olives. It's the same ones I used from all the other videos in here where you'll see black olives used. Build a lasagna as you normally would and layer it however you normally do. Do not change your lasagna recipe unless you wanna take some of that zucchini and cut it up and put it in it first and just save enough for the teeth. For the teeth, just thinly slice the zucchini and then you're gonna cut it. You know what teeth look like. You don't even have to worry about peeling it because you want that little bit of green so you can see it when it's on top of the lasagna. Place your cheese in like a face shape. Don't go all the way to the edges of lasagna because you want to see the face and then make sure you have holes that you poke out and like move the cheese away from for the eyes and for the nose and the mouth. Then arrange the teeth, not straight in the mouth hole but right above it, almost where the lips would be. Put the green toward the outside and the white part of the zucchini toward the inside of the mouth. Two of those black olive slices, and this guy is ready to go in the oven. Cover him with foil, bake him for 30 minutes at 375. Take the foil off for another 15 minutes, and he's done. I had to fix his nose after he came out, but then he was perfect. My kids, they thought he was hysterical. My mom, I sent her a picture. She thought it was too creepy to eat. 
This one's my favorite. This is my Oozing Brain Meatloaf. You guys, this thing is phenomenal. Make meatloaf however you normally do. I'm using two pounds of ground beef, panko breadcrumbs, about a cup, cup and a half, two eggs, and about a quarter of a cup of ketchup, whatever seasonings you like. These are just what I'm using. Season this thing to taste however you want to, but you do need a sturdy meatloaf, which is why I say the two eggs, to hold it together. 375, preheat your oven, because that's what you're gonna need. Put everything in the bowl together, season however you're going to. Yes, my little helper is right here helping along the way. And then use your hands, that is the best way to mix up meatloaf. I have never found another way to get it fully, fully incorporated. Put this thing in a 13 by nine baking dish and shape it as best as you can to a brain shape. And then to make it oozing, you can skip this next step entirely, but to make it oozing, kind of pull back on the top layer to make a cavity in the middle, and then you're gonna put cheese inside. You can use whatever kind of cheese you want, mozzarella, I only had the Colby Jack mix, but use whatever you have and stick it in there. Be careful though to make sure you leave enough space that you can cover it back up with the meat that you pulled off. Put sauce in there, this is pizza sauce because I didn't have marinara, but if you have marinara that's even slightly chunky, it would be even better tasting and more of a mess. Now to add the brain details, you need to make a line for your hemispheres and then you're going to take your finger and drag it around and make little squiggles on both sides of this thing, but don't go too deep if you did stuff this thing. All right, here's an overview of before it bakes. And then you're gonna stick this thing in your oven for about 45 minutes at that mark. Take it out, cover it in some ketchup, and brush it into all those little grooves. It'll just make it look more bloody and gutty. And if you don't wanna use ketchup, you can use your marinara sauce that you put inside this. You can put that on at this point. Bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes. Just check it on a meat thermometer because with it being stuffed, it's hard to know. But here is what it looks like once it's oozing. You guys, this thing, you, oh my goodness. I was so happy with this. The flavor was delicious. And for Halloween, it had a huge wow factor for my family. This one right here is pizza intestines. You can again customize this one however you want to. I just have some pizza sauce, croissant dough, pepperoni, and some cheese. If you can get the sheets, it will make your life a whole lot easier on this dough, just trust me on that. But you wanna cut up your pepperoni first and either shred your cheese or cut up your sticks, whatever you're using. Just make it where when it's inside the intestines, it's movable. But this right here is why I said if you can get the croissant dough sheets, you won't have to pinch all these perforations together. It'll just be a lot easier on you, but make sure you close every single one of those holes. Then you're gonna spoon your sauce down the middle. Don't go too heaping here. You want these to close completely and they will not seal if you have sauce all over them. Then whatever toppings you're going to use, whatever you wanna do for normal pizza, put in here. It will look just as gross coming out of it. So do that. If you wanna put some other meats in here, some vegetables, do it. That's on you, it's your dinner. Then line up whatever cheese you're gonna use, whether it's shredded or it's these or it's blocks, whatever cheese you're using, then go ahead and put that on top. The easiest way to do this is to lift from one side and pull it to the other and push it down, but it would be better if you could also just meet them both in the middle at the top, but however you need to do it, make sure you seal it down with your finger, and if any of those holes open up, reseal those too so it doesn't burst while it's cooking. If it does, it's not a big deal. But keep the ends of it open, because right here is you're gonna connect them as you can see my husband doing. You need those ends to be open so you can connect the dough to each other. Before it goes in the oven, take two tablespoons of butter and some garlic powder to taste, melt it and brush it all over these things. It will just help it add a little extra flavor and put a little more brown color to the top. Although you're gonna lose that here in a second, I'll explain why. 375 for 15 minutes at this point. When they come out at that, take some more of that pizza sauce and brush it all over the top so it makes it look more like a bloody mess and actually the color of intestine. And then what I also did was I kind of splattered that blood onto the parchment paper so that way it would just look that way because I knew I was gonna serve it on the parchment paper. Bake this again for another five to seven minutes and when it comes out, this is what it will look like. If you wanna know that it's fully done, just flip it over and you can see the brownness right here. That's what you're looking for and you'll know that it's cooked all the way through. And then when you cut it, it will kind of not ooze too much if you use the string cheese. 
if you use like a shredded cheese, it will actually ooze out a little bit more. We're gonna end on a fun note with the Hocus Pocus book brownies. These things are so easy and they are adorable. Just use any box brownie mix you want. I go for one that makes sure it specifies it's for a 13 by nine, some black cookie icing and some of those edible sprinkle eyes. That's all you're gonna need. Bake it according to the box for the cake-like brownies so they're more stiff and not gooey. You do not want a gooey brownie for this. And bake it for the 13 by nine at the time recommended on the box. I also line mine with parchment paper that I have sprayed down just to make it where I could pull it straight out like you see me doing here. Then there's no muss, no fuss with this. And you're gonna cut all the crispy edges off the side. Do not worry about it. My kids ate every single piece of this brownie, so none of it's going to waste. Then cut this into book shaped rectangles as best as you can. I did mine almost about the size of my palm. Decorating these things is not as hard as it looks. I promise you that. You wanna put one little dot to hold the eye into place and then you're gonna draw a circle around the eye. On the far side on the left, you're gonna want like a squiggly snake going down and then a straight line right next to it that you're gonna put small little dots on that are like little dashes to look like the book was sewed together. And then in each of the corners, you're gonna do two to three little curved lines because the book has snakes on it right there. You're not gonna be able to draw that on these if you see this one done here. This was the first one I tried. I tried doing it more like the actual book. This is the mess that you get, don't do that. This is just easier to do the way I decorated it. Here they are, they are beautiful, they are perfect. My whole family went nuts for these. I already put them on social media. They went crazy for them too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Got tons of Halloween inspiration. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.